Hi, we're back. I'm Rod Schaub and this is the sixth short part of the video series on electric fence fencing. In this portion, we're going to talk about some of the tools you use, some of the things you want to do, some of the things you don't want to do uh, when you're building an electric fence. And this is going to be more on the permanent type uh, of electric fence. Let's start off up here in the, the corner up here. Uh, barbed wire. Guys, this is not something that we want to ever electrify. Um, I know back in the day when I was a kid, we electrified it because we couldn't keep that 17 and a half gauge wire from breaking. And so we did, we electrified, we electrified this. Uh, but now that I've learned more, this is not something that's good to, uh, to electrify. Electricity goes around the outer side, outside edge of this wire and a lot of it jumps off at every one of these little points. So you're losing uh, voltage at these points, okay? The other real reason not to do this is uh, if you have kids or grandkids that would get caught in the fence, uh, you know, worse yet, a wife that gets caught in the fence, um, she would let you know for sure uh, that that's not the thing and we don't wanna do that anymore. So don't electrify barbed wire. Another thing we want to talk about is if you run out of wire, and I've seen, I've seen barbed wire that's been put together like this, um, this is not the correct way. Remember the electricity goes around the outside. We want to have the best connection we can have. So don't wrap your uh, wire where it looks like this. What I would really suggest that you do is use crimps and you can have a really tight splice. And I'll show you a picture of this in just a second. Now to do that, you're going to need a pair of uh, crimpers. These can be purchased online, very, very handy. Uh, and different sizes of crimps for different things that you're doing, okay? Um, these are the C23 clamps, uh, crimps. These are, are pretty much the basic standard crimp, okay? One other thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to use our standard old fencing pliers as cutters, okay? These just don't do a very good job of cutting that stiff, hard, high tensile wire and it's, if it does anything it's going to really really dull these. I'd suggest if you only have a little bit to cut get you a cheap pair of, of cutters something like this or you can get an intermediate pair. These are Nipix. These are really good fence cutters. These will cut it over and over and over. My choice is probably these. Um, not only because they have a cutter up here but because they're flat jawed and you can grab a hold of the wire and, and Pull it pretty tight just by using these pliers. So I'm going to take a, a minute and I'm going to get the video up here and we're going to take some pictures of what we have up here of other things that you might be interested in using. This piece right here, this is a real handy piece. This is a offset. It goes on a barbed wire fence and it would keep your electric fence about 12 inches away from the barbed wire. Works really, really good. It does have a pin lock in it. So this is, this is a really nice uh, thing. I use it in several places. Um, most of the time it's when I'm trying to get back to where I really want to put the wire on. But if you want to keep cattle from pushing even on a barbed wire fence, this works really, really well. Some other things that we want to talk about, here are some shutoffs, and, and note that there's different kinds and different colors. Um, what I would suggest is find one that you'll be able to see, and that's kind of why I like this middle one, because if you put this middle one up on a post and you put it up here like this, you know, you'll be able to see it from a distance because it's got that yellow handle. And please always mount it like it is right here where I'm showing you. Don't mount it so the handle can go straight up like this. 
because what happens if that bird sets on that handle, comes down, hits those, those uh, little fins, and all of a sudden the fence is hot and you're tangled up in it. Not a good, not a good thing. Here we have some bullnose insulators. These are what go on the end of the wire uh, when you're tying onto a hedge post or your corner post. This is what you would use. Uh, all of these work relatively well. If you're going to use porcelain, make sure you use the gray porcelain and not the white porcelain, okay? Uh, here are some things that we can use. They also go on the, uh, the corner post. As you can see, they, they, they would go on the corner post and then one of them has a ratchet that would help you tighten the, the wire at that point. And this one just has a bull nose which you wouldn't be able to tighten. You'd have to move on out further in the, in the pasture to tighten it. We also have voltmeters. Guys, you gotta have a voltmeter. You gotta know how many volts are going through that fence. Um, I really like the one here on the right. Uh, a lot of the chargers nowadays even have an on off switch. And so you can shut that charger off at any point anywhere you want to on the fence if you have a charger that's built for that. And then here on the end, we have three or four different th ways that we can tighten fence uh, and the tools you use to tighten them. Uh, we'll show a demonstration of these in, in just a little bit. And this piece that's right here, I really don't use those. If you had a lot of area where uh, maybe as in the timber and you were worried about limbs falling down on the fence and you didn't want to break it, that might be a place where you could put this piece of equipment because uh, there's enough spring there that it would, it would allow that to happen. Here we are at an end insulator. If you look at this picture, you can see the right end would be tied to the post. It comes out to the insulator. Note that the wires overlap. What ties it on to the post overlaps what goes on out to the fence. Also notice we put two crimps on this and you can see that that's gonna hold it relatively tight. Here we've tied a bullnose insulator on, but note that it's not correct. The green wire does not overlap the red wire and make this stronger. This is actually very weak and this is the incorrect, to do it, incorrect way to do it. Note that the right hand side is where you would have tied it onto the post and the red side is the side that would have been our hot wire. But note, when you look down here, you can see that it does not cross over. So it's very, very weak, and that is not the way to do that. If you did that with a porcelain insulator, it would break relatively easily. Okay, here we're going to show how you would tighten a fence using a daisy wheel. Um, I do want you to note that there is a half inch square here do not use a ratchet here because it can, because you get tension on this, it could come back and, and knock your teeth out. That's what it could do. Let me show you how you do this. You put this on the fence. You see the slot here. You put this on the fence. Then you grab your tool. Put it into the fence, into that, that area. Then, you twist this like this and notice, see how it's getting tight? Now, you can fairly safely do this and not have, have the pressure there. So then all you have to do is slide your, your, your stop in and you've got your fence tight. 